This is uh, Bernie. Hey, Bernie, say hi. And uh, all right, Bernie's a local musician. Has a, uh, a Coyote Music Series, I think it is. Coyote Ridge in West Milford. And uh, he's a bass player, plays in Ed Seaford's uh, band, the Stimulus Package. There's a uh, local yokel and otherwise, the otherwise uh, worldly individual. Bernie, let me ask you a question. What do you think about the music scene in the Hudson Valley? In the Hudson Valley? Yeah. It's or are you. Uh, pretty vibrant in the Hudson Valley. Okay, so you're from New Jersey. I'm, I'm in the in, like in the dead zone. You're in the dead zone. Music. So it's, when you when you strum a guitar in your zone, you can't hear it. Well, you can hear, but nobody really cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> That's very so you have you have a vibrant music scene from the city out to like Montclair, very, and then you have the dead zone, well, and then yeah. then you get back out here and a little further yeah. out, and it picks up again. Now is that dead zone because? Uh, the um, the uh, music uh, at the mission is gone, or no, no. But I mean, that was a music at the mission was a real phenomenon. Yeah, it was. It was this dead zone. I remember that. I mean, for, we lasted we lasted 14 years, but at the end, yeah. you know, you just have a different demographic. People are just. Yeah, surviving out there in this dead zone, and right, right. they don't want to leave their house to see live music or anything. Yeah, I know it's tough, man. It's tough, especially with uh, Woodstock's 50 is coming up. All right, man. Well, listen. I got one last question for you. Um, what, 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 what do you, what would you do if uh, if um, aliens landed and wanted to come in and wanted to to uh, listen to some of your music? Would you charge them full price? Price, I would I would let them in for free. For free. Yes. All right, here we go. Bernie uh, is I don't know if I'm going to use your last name, but uh, Bernie Bernie is uh, here. He's an ambassador to all music loving aliens from the planet Earth. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks for being interviewed. All right. This is uh, me, Stephen Conahay, and I'm saying goodbye from the Cafe Alamode uh, front porch, where they're about to have a. Uh, about to have an open mic. All right, man, thanks. So once the kids get up there, if we don't see Loretta and Gary, I'll ask if Larry will go in front of us. Cool. So, um, so that's the lineup tonight? That's the lineup tonight. Okay, this is Ed Seifert, uh, plays in the Stimulus Package, and he's here at Cafe Alamo tonight, and he's gonna be playing some of his original music. Uh, you can see Ed Seaford at um with another band Speed the Plow on Sunday. Right. Just did a gig with the Camp Fireflies. We don't have anything until September right now. So these are all your bands, Ed? Um, Plus the stimulus package? Mine. Okay. <laughs> and Speed the Plow, I'm a rhythm guitar player. Oh, okay, right, right. With Camp Fireflies, there's four songwriters and I'm one of them. Oh, cool, man. So uh, what do you think about uh, music in the area, the Hudson Valley, North Jersey? Uh, I mean, do you think that there's a, a, a very uh, a big um, a movement of like local players, like a circuit almost for like uh, for uh, uh, like people to come and play, or uh, is it all strictly like an amateur kind of a thing? Oh, it's, it's definitely beyond amateur. Yeah. Whether it's evolved into a circuit, I don't know. I'm a little removed from it, but you know, yeah. when you have 
people in the area like Alyssa Jones, like Loretta Hagen, oh, yeah, like great. Rave yeah. Tassar. Right, there's, yeah. there's so many quality people around here. And then, right. you, know, you don't know where you're going to bump into them. Yeah, I know. Whether it be an open yeah. mic or at a winery or mm. uh, half a dozen other places. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, very uh, high caliber musicians yeah, sure. in the area. Steve Conaghy, I've heard, is very good. Yeah, I've heard that he's no good, man. I heard that he's like. <laughs> well. He's hard to, work, hard to work with and uh, yes. just all around uh, pain of the ass. Yeah. Here we go in the background we have uh, Jim who uh, runs the open mic here at uh, Cafe Alamo. He, he, he did not give us permission to be on, on film. So. I can tell you what he wanted to say. Okay? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Jim has the reputation for being a little bit of a curmudgeon but he's a nice guy. We won't tell anybody. He cultivates that very yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> I think I see you had to strain from keeping, uh, from raising the finger. But um, anyways, Ed, listen, it was thanks. Thank you for uh, uh, being a part of this and uh, I'll let you know if anything happens on this. And uh, if there's anything else you'd like to say, now's the time to say it to uh, possibly like 10 or 12 people. Just 10 or 12 people? Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> yes, well, Whoever. thank you for what you've done. I know. You, you know, got us started with some shows of milkweed and things like that, and that's been a big part of it too. But yeah, all yeah. All the way back to, I remember the show with Loretta and Renee Lando years ago, yeah. that we put together. So that was tremendous. Yeah. I know it's not easy stuff, you know? Yeah, yep, you can only try, right? All right, man, so there's going to be something coming up uh, soon, and uh, I'll make sure to let everybody know. Thanks a lot, Ed Seifert, for Thank being a part of the uh, film. All right, man, cool. Thank you, Steve. Go out and see Ed play. It's great. Okay, uh, here we are at Cafe Alamo with Luke and Brendan McKean, who, uh, as you saw earlier, had that great performance. And uh, hey, guys, how you doing? Doing good. It's a nice, uh, nice uh, night to come out and play some music in the Hudson Valley, right? It's always fun. Yeah. You guys, yeah, you guys, here. you guys live close by, or? Yes, Otisville. Otisville. Okay, so that's New York, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right so, what do you guys? How do you guys feel about the music scene in the uh, Warwick Valley? It's interesting. Pretty amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of younger people that do things on particular yeah. parts of the town, and then 
Right. It's uh, an older crowd, and there's in between. It's, it, yeah, there's kind of like all ages, and yeah, um, everybody's so, like involved in the music, right? Yeah. It's not like you just like going in and seeing like like a, a twenty something, you know? And, yeah, it's a heavy yeah. mashup. Yeah, there's a of lot people. of variety. That's true. That's Jazz true. The country, cool. which is awesome. Yeah. So you guys, uh, I, I noticed that you guys in your your um, song material, the material that you pick, you like picking like older stuff and doing it, you know? Yeah. And it's uh, like a good style for you guys, right? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. grew we up a, listening yeah. to uh, older music and uh, yeah. it's always been part of our lives. So I think oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you guys, better way to share. you guys do it really well. Thank you. All yeah. right, so, uh, I, um, so let me ask you a question. If a uh, UFO came down right now, okay, and um, Elvis Presley got off of it and came up and said he wanted you guys to come up in the UFO and be in his band, uh, would you guys go? No. You wouldn't go? Uh, not no? a huge Elvis fan. No. <laughs> but the UFO, I, man. I mean, <laughs> that's true. I'm more of a UFO fan than I am an Elvis fan. Have you guys honest. ever seen a UFO? Uh, only in Pine Bush. Only in Pine Bush, yeah, right? The UFO capital of the yeah. world. One time right? I thought I did. Yeah. It was a weird light. Kept it was just a weird light, yeah. And I was like, yeah. that's UFO. Right, <laughs> yeah. That was swamp gas, man. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it's been uh, nice uh, talking to you and hearing you guys play tonight. And uh, Appreciate hope it. you guys have a great night. And thanks a lot for Thank our, uh, yeah, letting me do this. All right, good night. All right. But then uh, nowadays it's uh, one five six four. Yeah. How many? How many? I don't know. Yep. Yeah. You can do a medley on all those. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Well, I don't even know what we're gonna do. Very well. Done. What you 
Hey, this is Bruce Hutchinson. Um, just played at the Cafe Alamo tonight. Bruce, uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, right, yeah. So you're you're part of the Hudson Valley music scene now. I am. Yeah, man. Yeah. So uh, you come up here a lot uh, to Warwick and around the area. I live in Warwick now. Yeah. So You've been playing for quite a while, haven't you? Too long. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. It's always a treat hearing you and seeing you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so what'd you do tonight? What was the song you did tonight? Uh, Beatles. Uh, uh, the old Beatles. I need you. I need you. And yeah. uh, what's the other one? Oh, the rhythm section. Oh yeah, the Atlanta yeah. Rhythm Section. Right? See, right. you don't hear music like that anymore until you come out to these things and you get, you know, people come out and they play, uh, they play the, that old great stuff, man, that you don't hear in the radio anymore. Is, uh, you think that would that be a good reason of that, uh, you know, to keep the open mics going and the, the local music? Well, that is one reason. <laughs> yeah, that's one reason, right? Yeah. Keep the old people entertained. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, it was nice listening to you tonight, and uh, thanks for being a part of the uh, local music scene. Okay? Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. All right, hey Dave, how's it going, man? All right, how are you? Good. That was some great music. Oh, thank uh, you. It was one of the old, uh, old those old blues guys from back in the Delta there. Yeah, Mississippi blues. Mississippi blues, man. So you've been playing blues for how long? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, when did I get first get interested in blues? Uh, yeah, you don't need I to go into I always liked them, but uh, you know, in my fifties when I started really playing again. Oh wow. Yeah. So you started playing early on, then stopped, and then picked it back up. Yeah, I started playing when I was yeah. eight years old, played in high school like a lot of people. Right. And then, you know, always messed around with it, always had a guitar lying around. But uh, then I started taking lessons when I was 50. And now I'm 64. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, I enjoy playing guitar with you um, a lot. And um, I know when we get together, you know, it's like a different level of blues that I'm not used to. Uh, be an electric guitarist my whole life until I recently started on the uh, acoustic like maybe Seriously, like maybe ten years ago, right. but yeah, so man. Yeah, it's real cool So you have your own studio here uh, you live in, in the, um, the uh, Warwick area and um, You go to a lot of the open mics and uh, you have a lot of your own gigs and everything So what is your opinion on the uh, state of music in the Warwick Valley area? Oh, I think we have one of the best music scenes of any, you know, quasi-rural area around. Um, okay. Particularly the open mics. Uh, uh, I've been to open mics in various places, and I've never seen one better than, the, like, the two that we have in Warwick that I know of. Right. You know? Right, and that would be, yes. All right, so we're not going to mention uh, names of places yet, because I don't know if I have the, uh, the right to do that. But uh, oh sure you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm always I'm always thinking someone's gonna you know what the fuck. I already had one person call me and tell me they want it off. So I told you, right? Yeah, that doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, yeah. So cool, man. We'll just cut that out. Uh, so <laughs> so yeah, man. That's great. Um, and um, so uh, so that's uh, so you think um, it's uh, going very well. Um, do you have any complaints? Or anything that you would like to be see done better? Um, not really. I, I can't really think of anything I would complain about. Okay, yeah. Um, I know uh, Warwick does well because there's a lot of people that cruise through on the weekends, and uh, you know it's a very busy place. Um, but if uh, like if you go to an open mic out of town or maybe a different area, you know you might see maybe four or five different people. That's one of my complaints is that. 
I think that the musicians in the open mic should all support each other when they have their own private uh, gigs. You know? uh, uh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. To support each other and also even at the open mics, you know, yeah. not just come and play. Right. Um, there is one practice that uh, there was an open mic I went to. I won't re uh, tell you the name of the place because I can't think of it offhand. But uh, I think it was in Beacon. And uh, with a friend, we rode all the way out there to this open mic. And they had something they called early sign up, where people could come during the afternoon and sign up for the evening open mic. By the time we got there, the sheet was full. Uh, you know, so what that does is kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, prevent new people from yeah, playing there because yeah. it's only the locals who get to play. So yeah. we went, we stayed for a while and then we left. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was a pretty bad practice to right. do it. Sort that of, would be uh, like martial law open mic or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let people come and sign up and play yeah. in the order that they came, and you oh, know, play yeah. most are done. Yeah, I guess um, you could always find a better way to do it or something. You know, I've seen a lot of bad ones, uh, but you know, I think the open mics in the area, and I think you would agree with me, are keeping the, um, the live music scene alive because we don't have a lot of big bands anymore that you know they come through, and you got to go all the way up to Beacon or you got to go all the way over, you know, someplace else, but. Right. If you want to see live music in the area, you know. Well, I've always been yeah. a fan of local live music for, for yeah. a couple of reasons. First of all, um, I, I, you know, I, I've never been, uh, well, it, at, later in my life, I haven't been as enthusiastic about plopping down 50 or 60 bucks yeah. to go sit way in the back of some big place to hear somebody that everybody thinks is great, you know. I know. And that you can hear recordings and you have to travel to get there and get through security and they yeah. look at your bags and you know yeah, why yeah. not enjoy the challenge of discovering yeah uh, local music yourself sure you know you go to an open yeah. mic or you just go see somebody that eh, maybe you just heard they were good you never heard of them yeah. you know and you go see them and you discover somebody you really oh, yeah. like now yeah. you can see somebody you really like that you discovered that's yeah. satisfying for yeah. next to nothing and at any time you want, because they're local, right. um, you know, to me, that's the real fun. And I'd rather go see somebody who I know is a really right, good player right. locally than you have go, you, uh, you know, some big venue. Have you heard of Chris Robb? Chris Robb? No, I don't think so. Uh, Chris uh, R-A-A-B, man. He's like one of them smoking, uh, you know, uh, blues guitar players, electric guitar players. Oh, I have yeah. to check him out. Yeah, I saw him recently at the uh, Goshen American, um, you know, weekend or whatever. And uh, man, he just like just blew me away. Just one of them, one of those guys, you know. They come in, they got the voice, they got the licks, you know, and they just got it down, you know. And I was just like, wow, it was really cool. So anyway, you know, I mean, I I think it's really good, um, you know, um, that there's a lot of um, open mics in the area and there's a lot of live music. And um, the one thing, oh yeah, I wanted to ask you uh, something. Uh, when you go out and play live, do you, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't want to get into this. This is controversial, but, uh, you know, um, if you play someplace and, um, you know, and you're billed and adver advertised by the uh, place to be there and then uh, they're not happy with the turnout, do you think that you should be responsible for that or should the, <laughs> the owner business? <laughs> That's a really, I have been asked to play at places you know i don't yeah. i don't actively gig i tell you the truth right. uh i i tried it and found that that the as we say in yiddish source <laughs> the trouble that you have to go through uh ain't usually yeah. worth the 80 or 90 bucks i've yeah. i've had times when the owner didn't even remember that he hired me oh, um, or he i've had an owner ask me can you can yeah. you play this thursday night I said, sure, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. great, I'll pay you $80, $100, whatever. Yeah. And then he doesn't want to pay you because nobody showed up, yeah. you know, three yeah. days later. Like, the I'm supposed to bring of, some uh, huge following. Yeah. Definitely, uh, there should be some kind of um, um, a standardized kind of thing, you know, that people Maybe play. Maybe you need a contract. Right? Yeah. You would yeah, think a verbal contract. A verbal, would yeah, you would think so, yeah. I've had people hire me, then their businesses uh, would go out of business and then not call me and tell me. So I show up and the place is banged up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, uh, and that's... And so then you have like, you know, three people looking at you like, what is going on, Steve? You know, you said right. you were going to get something here, but yeah. 
Hey, it happens, man. Well, listen, thanks for uh, doing this interview, and I'll let you know when this happens. Okay. Uh, uh, let me say one more thing about okay. open mics. Just to, what, in case you want to use this, you don't have to. But to me, the great thing, thing about open mics is that it gives people a chance. I, I mean, the first time I played it, open mic, my fingers felt like Vienna sausages. My vo voice felt like somebody was choking me around the neck. Yeah. And uh, I was horrible, you know. Right, I was right, so, right. you know, yeah, I played in my living room or whatever, you know, but uh, I hadn't, you know, played out. And my wife said to me, you know, why are you torturing yourself like that? Right. And I said, well, because every time you do it, you get a little better and a little more comfortable. So now I've been doing it for, for years and it's nothing but fun, you know, and I think what that does for people is gives you a chance to build your confidence as a musician. Young people get a chance to try out their, their stuff and to get used to pe playing in front of an audience, right. a friendly audience. And it's a, it's a great social uh, thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I stopped in an open mic in, in uh, Rhode Island a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I played, yeah. played with some people, and I got to know everybody. I know you can't use it all, but yeah. I'm yeah. giving you. You can cut it out. Yeah. Well, I don't. All want, right. You know, if you got something you want to say, it's important. You know, I don't want nothing. To cut it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's definitely.